Welcome to Wholesale Roaches, I'm TJ, and today I'm gonna to show you how I set up one of our um, Discoid Roach breeder bins. In this case, this is a 27 gallon commander bin, and I'm gonna put uh, 120 females and 30 males into it. And whenever it comes to choosing a bin size, we do it based on how many egg crates we can fit into the, into the bin. Uh, we like to have two egg slots per adult roach, and the reason for that is, is once we set up the, uh, the breeder bin, we just let them run for about four months. So they need to make sure to have plenty of room for the babies to grow out and, and be comfortable before they get removed from the bin. So those are the ratios we, we run. Uh, whenever it comes to setting these up, you need to make sure that you have plenty of space between um, the top of your egg crate and the top of your bin. So I always uh, snap these in half. But if they're able to jump and even catch a little edge like that, they'll pull themselves up. Also, if you're using a lid, the screen sags down a little bit and they're able to jump up and get a hold of that screen, they'll run to an edge and they're pretty good about squeezing out the edges. All right, so once you get your bin, you want to clean it out real well. Um, make sure whenever you're cleaning it, you don't use an abrasive pad because if you put abrasions all over the edges, they'll be able to crawl out. If you start getting a lot of escapes, I would highly recommend you just get a new bin. People start putting uh, things around the edges. And for us, anyway, that just was a nightmare. It's, to me, it's just not an option. I hated it. So uh, that's my take on it. I, I wouldn't put the stuff around there. I just find a new bin that works, uh, works better. Also, you're gonna wanna check the bottom of your bin. A lot of times these split along a seam on the bottom. Your roaches escape out that way. So whenever you're cleaning it, make sure that you, uh, you check to make sure there's no splits in the bottom. Next, you're gonna wanna decide if you're gonna use substrate or not. If it's just a feeder bin, you're gonna be getting roaches in and out a lot. You don't necessarily need a substrate, but in this case, we're doing a breeder bin. So I highly recommend you use a substrate of some kind. Um, I like, I believe it's a uh, Zoomed, uh, what is it, Repti, it's like Reptosoil, I think it is. That's my favorite. I don't have any right now, so the, my second favorite would be the one we use today, which is Zilla Jungle Mix. So that's my second choice. And then the third choice would be a mix of something like uh, Coco Core. A lot of people use cocoa core. Uh, just a tip with the cores, a lot of people try to like break this off and you can't do that. So you need to take this apart and uh, and slice it. So you just take a butter knife and you just push it down and then see it'll just break apart. And then you can just crumble it. So see it breaks apart a little bit easier. So that's my recommendation. If you're gonna use this, make sure you break it apart in sheets. Don't try to snap it off, that's way too hard. If you do use uh, core, I recommend something like that. Like an orchid potty mix. Uh, you don't need to put a lot of it in there. But it just aerates it a bit. I find that core on its own, it really compacts and you just need a little more aeration, I think. So how much to put in is gonna be personal preference. I just like to make sure that the whole bottom is coated. That's all I'm looking for. Some people say two inches or four inches or I haven't found that to, to matter too much. It's just about making sure you get a nice covering along the bottom. Next, I put a little Excelsior in there. Um, if you buy your roaches from us, you'll, you'll receive some of this. Um, 
mean, you could use like a, uh, a moss or you know, just gives a little bit of space whenever you start really packing the egg crates in. So as far as the egg crates, I, I like to just snap them and use them that way. Uh, it runs uh, six and five, so I, I snap it the long way, but whatever height you want to use. You can obviously uh, cut it as well if you prefer. So I need a uh, 10, 10 uh, egg crates worth, which I've already done. So I'll show you how we stack it here. So you're gonna go uh, pointy side out, pointy side out, flat side to flat side. Again, this is for, for this particular bend. Um, yours, your bend is probably going to be different. This is just how we set it up. Here. On this side, we switch it. And we switch that for no particular reason at all, other than I just do that. I don't know why. So now when I first put this together, it's super tight. And the reason for that is, is as it ages and the uh, humidity gets to it, the roaches chew on it and start shrinking up a little bit. So I don't want everything to collapse in. So I make sure it's, uh, it's really packed in there at first. The jagged edges, I, I mean, I'm obviously I don't make it like a hard rule, but I try to put these at the bottom so they can pass through a little bit easier than the clean break. So now, um, in this area is where I put the food dishes. Now, I really like these uh, these little food lids. Like this is from Fit Life Food, but you can buy these at Walmart or from a food supply store. But um, I just I really like these. So whichever side I'm gonna uh, use is the liquid side. I put a little Excelsior under it so it gives it room. It just doesn't get all like uh, uh, moldy and stuffy. And, I don't know, I just like having it under it. All right, I just kind of give it a little spray down. If you have a um, a roach chow that's sensitive to water. Um, obviously, put this in afterwards. If you use our roach chow, they don't care. All right, so then I'm gonna put the bug burger in here. So the other choice that you need to make is, what are you gonna do with the top of this? So I like to put a lid at least on this side. Um, it's nice to have a lid on here. The only problem that with that is if you just have one bin, one breeder bin or a couple of them, it's not a big deal to lift this up and put your food and water in there. But when you have a lot of them, it's a little bit of a pain to lift these up. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but it's, it's just an extra step. So a lot of times these end up going away. 
but we always start with good intentions and put it on and then like i said this usually ends up going away on this side they like to peek through and grab things so i always just punch a few holes in a few of them i just use my thumb just randomly So you can either set it like this, obviously it's gonna catch more stuff. You can set it like this. This is how we like it. So just stick it down the roof better. So the roaches have been in here for a couple hours now and they seem to be settled in pretty good. I, um, I already put the bug burger in. I'll do a different video on how to make that. And then I always try to keep the uh, side for the moist food and side for the dry food. seems uh, pretty happy and content. We've got a little mating going on there. Sorry. Hope there's no kids watching. Alright, so heat. So there's many ways to heat your roach bin and uh, and we've tried most of them and what we ended up going with is climate control so the, the facility they're kept in is completely climate controlled we don't use this stuff anymore but when I first started out I uh, had to figure out a way way to get heat to them um, I did what most people do I got a, a heat pad you can also use a, a regular human heat pad. There's just not the built-in security features on them. You'll always want to plug into a thermostat. So you plug this in, the monitor is going to go like this one. We had hot glued in the side of the bin, um, but as long as it's somewhere around your bin, you just don't want to hang it into the bin, obviously, because then your roaches will just crawl out. So you either have to have it kind of uh, sealed inside or just real real close to the bin and then that way whenever it hits a certain temperature it shuts off the heat mat so how and where to place this heat mat there's i don't know it's uh it's really hard because you can watch a thousand videos and you'll probably get a thousand different ways to put a heat mat it, i don't think it really matters you just want to get a good amount of heat uh, in in the general vicinity of your bin um, so anyway you can use these but what I like, what I found to be the best is chicken brooders. So this is used for, uh, these are heaters. They, they cost like 20 bucks at tractor supply or farming stores. Um, there's, there's the actual product information. If you want to look it up. So these work awesome. I love these and I highly recommend these because they, they come with, um, they come with a little, you can either set them up in a stand they can they can stand up like this so you can put a, a brooding heater on each side of your bin um, the other thing that you can do is they have areas on the back here where you can you can use it as a hook so you can hook into these as well so it can kind of come up and under here up and under here All right. so you can have it hang right over the top of your bin as well so you can have it to heat that way. Uh, the only thing you can't do, or at least I never did, was set it, set the container directly on top of it. So if you really need to raise it a lot, you can put this underneath the bin and then you could hang this on top of the bin. But in either way, what I recommend is the chicken brooder, the chicken heater. I really liked it a lot. watching I'll let you guys take a final look at the bin here so they're just getting settled in still and uh, I'll see you on the next video